This video has been supported by Tektronix. Hey guys, they've sent over one of their no longer brand new, but in comparison to everything else in this corner, absolutely futuristic touchscreen SMUs. In contrast to my high voltage hot rod, this is a high current model that can deliver 7 ampere continuously and 10 ampere in short pulses. That's a maximum of 1 kilowatt pulse energy and a key feature for this beautiful Keith Lee. Another obvious one is the completely made over user interface. That takes a short boot time, but in exchange gives you a number of functions that no other SMU ever had. In this video I'm just going to be goofing around with it a little bit, to get to know my way around. A first practical, lasery application is going to be in a separate video. For now, Keithley 2461 source meter, let's go. First I want to satisfy my morbid curiosity and see what happens when you put a short 1 kW pulse into a quarter watt metal film resistor. There is a special sub-menu for configuring pulses. After entering the parameters and generating the configuration, it will perform a brief sanity check to see if what you want is possible. Luckily it doesn't know that I've connected this flimsy resistor, otherwise it would probably shut down and cease to cooperate with me. I've asked for a 5 second delay so that I can take cover somewhere. Oh, was that all? Inductance of the long test leads has kind of thwarted my evil plans this time. Still almost 600 watt were present briefly and the resistor only got this small puncture where part of it was vaporized. Oh and we are taking deep breaths to prepare for another such pulse. How about an old carbon specimen? Just kidding, that was also laughable. But with a high speed data acquisition mode, which they call digitizers, we can record these short events at 1 million samples per second. That is a very useful feature for analyzing the behavior of circuit protection devices like polyfuses, which are essentially PTCs that warm up and increase their resistance. Or transient voltage suppressors, which are essentially Zener diodes that sacrifice themselves for the greater good. Absolutely heroic. There are much more interesting diodes out there though. Not all of them are well suited to demonstrate destructive high power pulses. These continuous wave laser diodes especially deserve a clean ripple free power supply. We'll do more with those later. With a focus on higher current they didn't equip this SMU with traditional triaxial connectors. But it does have the fantastic 1 picoampere measurement resolution that goes crazy when you do as little as move around near a setup. There is a screw terminal on the rear with guard pins for applications where leakage current matters. In a low impedance situation there is some misleading thermocouple current. That effect is built right into the connectors. But in those rare cases where it matters, you can probably build a thermally stable test fixture and zero it out. In high impedance circuits, which are the best kind of circuits anyway, everything is fine. In really high impedance circuits too, but I think here we would need shielding and guarding again. Because this is supposed to be a 1% 100 gig resistor. These are hermetically sealed low leakage diodes, half a picoampere according to their datasheet, for $20 a piece in single quantities. With long test leads in the front panel we are getting over 50 picoampere readings. 
just by using the screw terminals and a flappy piece of aluminium tape for shielding. Things get much better. So in conclusion, I miss my Tri-X connectors, but for what this thing has been designed, it's all good. It was not designed for this, of course, but it can pretend to be a simple old power supply. Including web browser remote control, up to 6.5 digit resolution, and bipolar output. It's actually even better than bipolar. Like every good SMU, it's a four quadrant device that can both source and sync a high power. Meaning it can charge and discharge a wide variety of batteries and caps. That way it can generate data based on which ESR, aka internal resistance, state of charge, capacity and maybe even age can be calculated. There isn't a special user interface prepared for that particular application. But you can create a complex flowchart with logic, timers, source and measure actions, digital IOs and everything else right there on the touchscreen. This one will take a measurement and do nothing if the voltage on that huge cap is already over 3 volt. Otherwise it'll enable the source output for one second and jump back to the start afterwards. That's a very crude bang-bang controller and a function that the instrument itself does much more effortlessly. But wow, the possibilities with this flowchart mode are endless. Well, I'm actually not sure about the endlessness, but many flowchart languages are Turing complete. So you can probably implement Doom on your SMU or something. Look at it work. Beautiful. What's next? I wonder if we can integrate current over time to measure charge. Or control motors with the GPIO pins and automatically characterize oddities like pressure versus LiPo voltage. The flowchart generator is really cool for setting up a complicated test in situ. But it's not all. There is an entire software development kit, the Keithley Test Script Builder, that gives you complete control of your instrument with a Lua-like language. If you've ever programmed an Arduino, then you're immediately able to understand and work with the provided examples. This one will single-handedly record an IV sweep on a solar cell and characterize it head to toe. Dude, that is not a solar cell. That's an entire ready-to-roof module, consisting of many equal solar cells. Having all of them working simultaneously makes things pretty difficult for a research-grade instrument. But the high current source meter almost reaches the maximum power point, in straight-up DC electronic load mode. Now it would be really interesting to see if with a modified test script and a limited duty cycle we could reach and go right past that point. Maybe even compile a VI plot like this, but purely from pulsed data. But right now I've got even more interesting things upstairs. This dubious package might need some personal protective equipment. Because knowing where it came from, it's probably full of unbearable newspapers. And a few scientific artifacts. One might almost think that the sender is aware of my appreciation for warning labels. And my willingness to recommend his awesome Twitter feed in exchange for these. Check out Giga Becquerel on Twitter to find out what these carbon straws are and how he got them personally at CERN. I don't think they used them as tent poles. Oh look, there's an e-cigarette in there. Anyways, back to the matter at hand. Here are some smaller, more interesting solar cells. 
They are actually photodiodes for precision photometry. They have a fantastic part number, S1337, and a really universal spectral response from UV to IR. I've put one in that metal box and left only a narrow slit open for some ambient light to leak in. Even though that's such a crude setup, the sensitivity of both the photodiode and the Keithley under test are clearly enough to detect my movements, probably from shadows on that wall. I can also just kill the lights and watch how slowly but inevitably the last bit of daylight is fading out. It was a fun day and now I know the basics of operating the Keithley 2461. Now I'm feeling ready for a real application. How about you?